Hello stream. Hello world. How's everybody today? You might be able to guess what day it is. Whoops, wrong way. Got a little theme going, you know, because why not? It's uh, it's fun. We like it. It's actually what I keep on my desk. I feel like I should put them up here. I feel like I was going to get in the way though. Oh, maybe right there. Where should our little skull go? That's not bad. Can't find exactly the right place. Like, kind of like him right behind me. But you can see his teeth better there. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. We'll leave him there for a little while. See what happens. Yeah, I like it. Uh, get all those cords out of the way. Uh, cool. So, been working on this a couple different projects, one of which is um, making a new GIF. Ah, uh, it's kind of Halloween like. Ursula sitting there screaming. Um,. But one of the projects I've been working on a little bit is trying to, I'm not trying to, but getting a, some video cut so that it automatically transitions in between scenes uh, to auto assemble videos with all of the music and YouTube's audio library, the free audio library, because uh, I just want to put all of them up so that I have access to all of them to build playlists that we can put in the streams, etc. But I want to put videos behind it. So I looked and I found a few public domain uh, videos like those right there. But what I want to do is find more and find a bunch of them, right? Because I only had like five or six videos in there. And that would get really repetitive after, you know, because there's a couple hundred songs in the YouTube library. Uh, actually, I actually don't know how many songs are out. Let's go look. Oh, wow. 800 songs in 2019 and 543 as of, I think, October was when I stopped. Like, so I'm just doing them all by month. This is a full set. Oh, see, I'll have to go back through. I think these are just for through September, actually. Maybe even, I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, but I need to get the rest of 2020 as 2020 progresses. So 1500 songs or 1300 songs. So when I get a bunch of video and then auto assemble the video to put into it. And so I've got the assemblers kind of set up. Um, the Pi scene detect is what I'm using. So I, I, I set up originally just to do random cuts of the videos. Um, because originally I had done, a long time ago, I had done scene detection with FFmpeg, but it didn't do very well. And I know now that it's because of the way that the keyframes work and all this stuff behind the scenes on videos. But this Pi scene detect does a really good job of cutting out videos um, scene by scene. Um, so that's really cool because then I can actually use it to do some of the assembly or help me with some of the assembly by actually making like um, starts of scenes and ends of scenes so that it works better, looks better, hopefully. Um, but now we just want to feed it a bunch of videos. So uh, NASA has, there's several different APIs out there that I've been looking at. Um, and NASA has this one. Uh, and so it's weird to me that there's only 97 results for Apollo 11. Like, I feel like there should be way more videos for Apollo 11 as in the Apollo rocket that landed on the moon. Um, so I don't know if this is just only a partial library. Um, Subble with two L's or one? One through 100 of 158. See, it doesn't seem like there's actually that many videos in this archive. Um, I wonder if you just do A, what happens? 
Oh, 5,304. Ah, interesting. So we could maybe just grab all of them. Okay, so 5,304. What happens if you just search for B? 288. Uh, the. How about that? Five, okay, so fi there's 5,304 um, videos in this library, which seems tiny for NASA. I think. I mean, right? That seems small. Um, but so now the question is, do I want to get all of these? Um, and also how, mm, this is super interesting. Like, how do I want to do the assembly? Because I don't necessarily want to grab all these videos and have them all downloaded. Um, Like, I just, that would just be taking up a whole bunch of space. And I can't, like, throw them over to YouTube and then easily pull them back down. But I could, like, so what I could potentially do is set up the script to go randomly grab some, Im some videos, pull them down, cut them, edit them, and put them back up. Or, like, whatever make a video out of them basically right yeah i think that's what i'm gonna do i wasn't exactly sure how i was gonna do this like but that's actually probably the best way to do it um i like it i think that's gonna be a good way to do it so we'll go through we'll build because they've got an api uh So I've started making little API cuts here. So this is our API and it's actually, I've, I've, it's pretty nice and easy to use. Um, it took me a second, their, their docs are a little bit out of date because it says the only thing that you can call are media types of image and audio but you can actually call it when I first saw that I was like, oh man, there's no video in there, but you can, you can actually throw an image type of video at it, which I just tried and it worked. Um, so yeah, so that's cool. Yeah. And so then you just throw, I mean like, uh, let's do this paste because that command needs to be on one line or have slashes. One of the two, I'm actually surprised I didn't do slashes there. It would have worked with slashes. And what I mean by that is, we can actually just do it. So, if we just tried to run this, it freaks out because we're trying to run this and then it stops and it says expected queue and then command night not found for this next line. But if we put slashes back here, which is something I've just recently started doing and like, cause it used to freak me out and now it doesn't, I don't know why. Um, but if we just put slashes, Ooh, what was that? At the end of each line, what is that? What is that? Oh, one password. Okay. Um, paste that in there. That then the slash lets you continue the command on the next line. Um, so there's our JSON, like there's the response and wow, that was fast. I didn't think at all. Um, oh yeah. And so here's the next previous. So page two. Which, what is the dash G in curl? Man curl. Dash G. Get. Oh, okay. When you use this option, we'll make all the data specified with D, data, 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 data code to be used in an HTTP get request instead of post or otherwise. Would be the data will be appended with the URL. Yep. Oh, okay. So that's just how you do. So I see what's going on. 
this is the same thing as this minus this page two, um, just using a different format to get it. Um, the, in fact, what it would be Well, we can drop the Python JSON tool for a second. So really what it is is that the search, you put a question mark here and then, oh yeah, so they're doing the data encode. So spaces are bad. Um, oh, it's using a plus instead of a ampersand 20. Eh, whatever, it's fine. Um, So if we just do curl on this, see URL, there it is. Oh, okay, so the Python tool, what is it called, Python mjson.tool? That just makes it easier to read. Oh, that's handy. Did that say Adam Savage? Adam Savage. Uh, oh, you know, it'd be interesting. So I can search that way, but also I could search. So how about this? Let's take away. Let's just do Q Huntsville. Which is where I grew up. Here, let's put this on its own line. That makes more sense. Oops. Zip. Total hits 1,881. Wow. Whole bunch of stuff from Huntsville. Marshall Space Light Center, Huntsville, Alabama. That's really impressive. So out of 5,000 something, almost 2,000 are from Huntsville. That's kind of cool. Uh, sweet, okay, so. What would be a good way to do this? Because it's. Because some of these videos are going to be a while, right? So I'm trying to figure out how I want to how I want to run this, basically, right? Because um, what you could do is run the process and just go get new videos for every single one, like randomly pick one, and that's kind of interesting. But of course, that's going to take a while every time you run it. But like that still might be neat. Why don't we set up to do that on the first one and then we'll see where it goes from there. Even though that's going to take some time, but that's okay. So, and also I don't super know how to test this. Um, so here, yeah, so this is an example of the JSON that gets pulled from uh, that query that we just ran. Oh, total hits 5,000. Oh, interesting. 300. I got almost all of them. Oh, yeah. Data you're in Cal Okay, so that's all the videos. They've got 5,300. And so now I'm guessing if we run this command. Again, I'm just going to throw it all. Eh, that's fine. Good here. Let's see if it doesn't give us 5,304. Oops. Oh, I saved it somewhere. Where did I save it? This little uh, either greater than or less than sign going to data means I saved the file out to my main drive. Um, let's go to dev. Actually, I can just run this from here. That's going to overwrite the existing data one. Here we go. 5,306. So they just added two videos. Or wait, was it six earlier? Three hundred four. That's funny because this won't let me search for just video. It it makes you put in something, but the the query here 
we're not the Q is the search string, so we're not querying for anything other than media type equals video. So five thousand three hundred six. So how many how many videos are there? I mean, how many search results page pages are there? Uh, and the way that we figure that out, whoops. So here, let's do this. Get video list. But what I could do is just do the paging. So the way that this works is when you get a request back, if there's more, if there are more pages, you get this next prompt. And I'm guessing if you're on the second page, there's a previous prompt. Ooh, didn't like that. Wait, why did that put all that stuff in there? Uh, hang on. Let's look at our APA and docs. Page, optional. Page number starting at one of results to get. So here. Page two. Ah, page three. Let's bump a little bit. And then run that. So we're overriding data again. Yeah, previous or next. Okay, so that's how you move. So yeah, so we got page three. Page four is next. Page two is previous. All right, so let's do this. New file, folder, whatever. Zero one, get. Video. Get top level video JSONs. Uh, get JSONs. Dot pi. A folder JSONs. Uh, let's actually make. I'm always at a loss about where to store data for these things. Um, I think I'm going to kick them up here. Let me try this first once. Or should we just call it storage? Storage. Because we're doing zero ones and stuff up there, so this will be fine. So new folder zero one top level video JSONs. Get video JSONs pi. User bin environment Python three Python. That's the way that I do it. Import JSON. Import sub process. So It's the beginning and the ending ones that are always the trickiest. Um, it's easy kind of once you get in there and you're in the loop. Um, oh, well, I guess you could do... You, 
you uh URL equals What I have two JSONs? Did I make two of them? I did. Delete that one. So we're not gonna have any crazy characters. So we can do this colon or whatever that is, question mark. Media type equals video and page equals one. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. I saw a thing the other day that we can do. So we can actually just pass this. I don't have to fill that in for format. Base URL. Because normally what I do here is do format one. And then over time we'd replace that number. But what I can do is I don't have to do the dot format. This is just a string. And I think, here, let's test this. So print base URL. There's our base URL. But now print base URL dot format one might not like it there you go so i can just continue i can just fire that off and make the calls and that url should be the same as this url yep so as long as i see a next i can just increment the number and call the url and that also gives me a counter So what's the right way? This is always tricky because you're firing. Like I don't have I don't have a good way to do this without firing up against the API. Um, well, I guess you could save. What's see? What's a good way to do this? So if we save one down, pass it around. So here's here's file one. which is now here in data. I don't know why next is highlighted there. Is that because I searched for it? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, there it is. So what I can do, we're gonna call this one.json. Page one dot JSON. Yeah, it'll work. I'll just paste this in there. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. We're just we're playing with it for a minute. So because if we save it and then we can load it back. Yeah, this will actually, so this might actually be okay too, because if something chokes, you could restart it. Um, and it, yeah, I kind of, I think this is better separation of concerns. Um, maybe, ah, it doesn't super matter. Like you could just loop it and fire it. Like it's going to be relatively simple. I'm just, again, trying to go through the exercise of like, if this was a trickier thing, how would you do it? So counter equals one. All right, I'm gonna, yeah, again, this is just, this is kind of a weird way to do this, but we'll see what happens. But how, so how would you exit the while loop is the question. So JSON data equals JSON load. Oh, you gotta open it with open.
right over here. So we got to up a directory and then the storage. Storage zero one. Page one. I'm not going to worry about leading zeros there. The zero one in the storage is more for me. The page ones are more for the computer. So that's fine. As JSON file JSON file print JSON data. So what does this get us? Should just open the file. Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm going to close this. We'll look at this. Mini align, mini align, mini align. Items. Links. Okay. So. Now we need to look for links. If, well, links should always be there because there's always going to be either a next or previous. And again, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying to get a base level for this. I'm not trying to do every possible combination of like, oh, well, links might not be there. Links like. Looking at the API, I'm going to expect links to be there. So I'm not going to try and write an exception case for the, if the API does something weird. So for link node or link, whatever, in JSON data, collection links print link this should be it's also nice to have the JSON down because I'm not having to hit the API which I don't I'm not worried about breaking their API but like it takes time this is just like doot. So link. So can you, how would you, would it be safe to recurse this? Or would you just set, and so again, I'd, I don't have to worry too much about the processing of this. I can just say, hey, target the links, loop through them, pick rel, relative, I guess. And if you see next, up the counter. Like, I'm not worried about other stuff happening in there. Um, based just, just off the look at the API, right? So I'm, I'm kind of making some assumptions. I could actually go back and look at the docs a little bit more. Um, but like... Yeah, I mean, this is what it looks like. I mean, if that schemas, maybe that schemas, that schemas. That'd be cool if they had schemas. They don't. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so there's. So now if I'm going to assume they all have rail. Link. Rel next. I don't remember remember Python if are you supposed to do if balance because in there like is or in I'm just going to do this. 
if it works. So if rel equals next, counter equals counter, whoops, equals counter plus one, which I tried to do plus plus the other day and it didn't work. Print counter. So that should be two. Two. Gotcha. So now how how do we escape out of it? How do we get a, how are we gonna break the loop? Because you can't. Oh, I got it. But actually I need to take one break. I'll be right back in just a minute. All right, so the way that we could break out of this is So if this is in a while loop So counter and killer. So while counter and killer are not equal to each other. I'll try this in code runner. While, so we've got counter equals one, killer equals zero. While counter is not equal to killer, do something. And then if no, so what you do is then killer equals killer plus one. So right now, killer is up there. If uh, something, what's a good thing here? Pi random. It 
So if random num is not equal to two, counter equals counter plus one. So when we enter the while loop, the first thing that happens is killer catches up with counter. And if counter stays the same, killer is going to kill it and it'll break the while loop. But we've got a test running. And so after we've generated a random number, if that random, if whatever the thing is that we want to have happen happens or we don't have hap doesn't happen, counter gets bumped. So counter is no longer equal to killer. It's one ahead. So when you go look at, so when you jump back to the loop, they're not the same. I guess I should have hit. Oh, wait, my logic may be off. Oh, wait, 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 hang on. I got actually, <laughs> my logic was off because I got to do that. Um, so we can put that on one line. If that, does that get too confusing? Yeah, let's assign it and then do it that way. What just happened was I only generated the random number one time, so it was always the same number, whatever that was. Um, So now if we do it, see, wow, it took a long time to get to two. So we can use that for our finding of next, because the, the trick is like we don't have a really explicit, so, cause we have to do go through a loop. So you, I, I guess you could sit here and you could go through the loop and set next and look for it in both places and see if you got it and then up it. But I kind of like this. But of course, in order to do this for real, we got to do it for real. Um, because it, like, otherwise you're running the while loop and if you're not pulling anything back, it's going to run forever. Um, So let's finish the full, let's get the full thing going. Def get JSON data. So I guess we'd want to set these up here. Uh, see, I want to, you know, what, I'm going to put this in a class. I'm trying, I'm testing my class tasks, my class skills here. Well, and so do we want to try and test this? I'm not sure how we would test this. Let's see if we can figure that out. Nah, you know what? <sighs> Test every time I every time I don't test or sorry every time I am like him and hawed about it and I do test it turns it turns out to be a good idea so let's see if that continues. Import unit test from get video JSONs import get JSONs, which doesn't exist yet. Just give it something. Self counter equals one, self killer equals zero.
Yeah, I kind of wish there was, well, I guess I could do it on Stack Overflow and ask like what a good way, actually I could just look for it on Stack Overflow, I'm sure it's already there. But I kind of like to ask like, so this is the methodology that I just came up with for going through while loops to look for an arbitrary thing. And if you see it, continue the loop. And if you don't see it, exit the loop. And we're doing it on account. I mean, it's the same thing as doing true. Yeah, so this is the same thing. Yeah, this is, this is, I'm just doing a slightly different version. So the way that you often do this is you don't use killer as a number. I do like, I do like this because it's, so the, the other way that you do this is you set watcher equals true and then while watcher true run let's get our this thing going again uh and then this again and then what we would do is here you would set watcher equals false and then here you would set watcher equals to true but you still got to do this And that should give us the same thing, maybe. Zip. There we go. Yeah. So prints random numbers until you hit two and then stops. So this is doing the same thing. I'm just doing a different comparison. Slight difference in terms of like you've got to update the counter and then also set the watcher to true. I kind of like the other one, right? With the killer. So it's killer. So like, is it like a line shorter? It's a killer, random number. It's one line shorter. So what? But I kind of, but I do like the fact that you don't have to. You don't have to set two things. I do kind of like that. And, and it's less about there being one less line as in more than having to not do two things. Um, yeah, I like that. Okay. Anyways, set JSON, def, get killer. So, so, so def, so what's, so here's where I don't know what to test. And again, this is the exercise of trying to figure out like how to apply tests. And like one of the things is like, well, two two aspects of this are don't test stuff that's already well tested. So don't test curl, don't test Python's while statement. You want to make sure that your logic of the while statement's good. So I mean, so I guess you could I guess you could test passing in a JSON with a next and a JSON without a next. But like, I'm going to just break the while loop when I'm doing that. Like I'm going to put the stuff directly in the while. I don't know. I, I can't figure out where to hook into that. I would like to figure that out though. So we're going to figure it out. Um, so class test, get J oh wait, get JSON test, right? Is that the format? Get JSON test, unit test, test case, and then def set up self so global get g g gj and then gj equals get json
Test, whatever. We'll just make sure our tests are working. Test failed. Oh, that doesn't work so good. What's going on? Cannot get, get JSON. Is it get JSONs? Let's get JSON. Let's try that. First test. There we go. All right, so what... I mean, I guess I need to test the files. I need to test that... And so how would you... Like, I'm trying to figure out how you want to break the loop. Because what you could test is... The the path to the file or the file name and the URL to get. Okay, let's just start there. Um, uh, test file path and URL. And so we're just gonna set this Uh, file name, how about that? File name is path page1.json. URL. Yes, this is way overkill for the script, but it's the exercise. Page one. Sounds good to puke because we're not sending the same thing back. So now we do shameless green. And then Actual equals GJ get file name and URL. And I like, I don't really know, I don't have a good concept of how to do this yet. So I'm just going to try and follow, I'm just going to do whatever the next thing is I can think of in the test and see what happens. And we go ahead and pass that a one. I'm kind of combining two steps here, but that's okay. Def that, that. Ooh, uh, actually, no, I'm not gonna do that. We're gonna do that as independent steps. Yeah, and actually we can do it even better. So this way we can make sure, so here we can make sure that the thing returns. So, so we make sure it compiles. Oops. So now it compiles. Now what we're going to do is actually call it. And so it's not working because nothing's returning. Return dict equals that. Return, return dict. Now we're passing again. Okay, so now we can actually make this stuff work. And this time we want to pat, and so I can get rid of this. So I want to pass a one, this is going to fail. Actually, I want to do counter equals one. So that's going to fail. Counter, now it should pass, there we go. And then format counter, still passing, still passing. Format counter. Uh oh, I didn't work. Oh, passing. So I've got the counter.
download curl details. I'm just making this. I'm not using those yet. Whoops. Oh yeah, actually I'm not using any of that yet. Here, actually, just totally get rid of it. I'm gonna get rid of some of this stuff. It's kind of my prototype down there. I'm gonna leave it for a minute. And also, I'm not using these yet. I, I want. I don't want to put stuff in until I use it. Like I want to. I want to keep it. There. Okay. So there's our counter. And so all I'm doing is running curl across that and getting and putting a file. So I don't need to test curl and I don't need to test writing to the file system. All I really need to test is and how how do you test the while loop? So like you so because I've got to get each file before I can test it. Well, so I guess what you would do is see, it's just weird. To, it's weird to test this API stuff. Um, so what you could do is you could make those things independent. Cause you can't just run through the while loop cause you wouldn't know where to stop. You have to go get the files in order to know where to stop. But if you're going to get the files, like that's tough. That makes it tough to test. So we could split it to, well, we could kind of mock it and we're making some assumptions about what the what the next file looks like. So but I don't know where do, where you break I don't know how to test breaking a while loop. So if you're just looping See, I want to try and write a test first for this. I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Because this doesn't really have insight into a while loop, and that wouldn't, because you wouldn't know where to get it. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. So what you could do, maybe, def test. But how, how would you then break it? So like, see, I've got two states. I, I think I, I think you could test how to break it by passing it something that's going to eject out of it. But then how do you test that it's working? I, well, I guess you only really need to test the ejection, right? Eject from while loop. You know what? We're gonna do this. I was gonna maybe start typing all this stuff, but that's boring. So what you what you'd have is the most recent JSON. <coughs> in memory. JSON 
load s, which I guess really is just, it's just an object, right? But that's okay. That's the way to get to it. Cause that's how we all have loaded it. So that's fine. I don't know if that just makes an object or if there's actually like a JSON object that's in there. Um, we could figure that out at some other point, like right now. JSON object equals JSON load s blah 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 and then print dir no wait dir is this dir JSON objects JSON must be string or bytes. Oh, okay. So it needs a string. Let's put that somewhere where we can see it. Rabbit. push pop from key get items. So is it just, is that any different than plain object equals that print dirt plain object. Those look the same to me. Okay, so it just makes it an object. It just loads it from JSON. Okay, I wasn't sure about that, or I didn't know about that. I didn't know. So JSON, okay, so this needs JSON. JLN is here, port JSON. And then that needs to be a string, which is why it's highlighted yellow. Oh, cool. Mm. Mm -hmm. Whoops. These tests working? Yeah. Okay. So I really kind of wish. Is there like Python prevent making instance variables? convention for making instance variables protected is to add a prefix. In fact, this doesn't prevent instance variables from being accessed or modified. The instance, you can still perform the following operations. Hence, the responsible program refrain from accessing modifying the instance variables prefix outside of its class. Yeah, so I wish that was more enforced instead of So that's our latest JSON. And so well, how how do you test while loops? Like I can't come up with a thing. 
coding bat. While loops and unit testing. There we go. While system print count, yeah. That right one. While zero infinite. Loop and a half break for test. Oh, no, that's testing to see if the thing continues. With a pencil and paper, trace execute. Is this a test? I think this is a test. With pencil and paper, trace the execution call of mystery three from the code below. Make the table show the values of C and N at the end of loop. See, this is nuts. Like, with paper and pencil, like I get that they're trying to show you the stuff, but like, that's what we have computers for. Rewrite the code below so that it uses a while loop instead of for root. Oh, this is a test. I understand now. Wait, unit testing, here we go. The unit test. Why well, the correct the function? It's called longest run. Go string with run. Give an example of uh, should be part of uh. In the previous examples, we've written tests that just print out the function value. We can then look at the output on the screen, evaluate whether or not this will work. For an example, we'll use a helper function that checks the function result against the known correct answer and only prints a me message of it's wrong. This is also a strategy used in homework four. Helper function is simple. Go ahead. This isn't really helping me with the unit test. So, okay, so hang on. So what you could do Yeah, see the test condition. That's not what I'm looking for. That's the test that determines whether or not the while loop can go. Like it, the while loop has its own test. This is the test. While condition is true, do something. Unit test while loop. How to do, okay, so hang on a second. Before I look at that, because what you could do, I want to see if I can come up with a thing. So, counter equals one. Keep going. See, this isn't great. Equals true. Wait a minute, or could we use the killer thing? Because what I'm thinking we could do while, so let's get back to this one. Great, I copy and paste it. Class the runner def in it self counter equals one self 
killer equals zero. Def. Checker. Self. Return false to start with. Oh, actually, hang on. Self killer equals one. Runner self. While see this one first, self killer psycho kid copy strike print running. No, because you still want to pass. Do you want to? Well, hang on. I have a feeling I'm making this overly complicated, but I need to get something down so I can see it. Self checker. If name equals main. TR equals the runner. TR runner. I didn't do this or this. So it immediately kills. Okay, that's right. So. I'm looking for I'm looking for a separation here. Cuz somewhere there's got to be a while loop. And that while yeah, and so that while loop needs to needs to kick out and do that. So So this is where you would check the JSON. Oh, wait, 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 hang on. No, 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 Here's what you'd want to do. While that, do that. Self checker. And then checker would increment counter. So checker get, counter gets away from it here but that needs to be in a conditional. This is the same structure we did, it's just split out. It's the same thing. So here's the while, here's the conditional. So we're just moving that to, to this. That's cool. Okay, this, this lets us do our check without Without um, watch my thing. So this is self. 
So this way we're not testing the while loop. We're just testing the logic in here. Let's see what happens. Random number. Not equals to, oh, we gotta generate the random number. Oops. Stop. I hit stop. Sometimes a little slow to stop. This would be an infinite loop. Holy crap. Please stop. I should do this maybe in PyCharm. Because I could do this in PyCharm and it would be fine. Something about jumping to Code Runner helps me think a little bit. I don't know why. Uh, we definitely need this to stop before it catches on fire. You can curl C down here. Nope. Oh, I want that code. Oh, well, here. We'll get a... Oh yeah, it's not even coming back. There it is. There, hey, stopped. Okay, let's put this in PyCharm. Scratch pad. Actually, let's go actually to scratch pad. New directory test while loop. While loop example pi add paste. Yeah, so we're just all we're doing is we're, we're lifting this out. We're lifting this out into its own method. And then the return value of that gives us the um, gives us the output to figure out if we want to do whatever. So self checker. Okay, so self counter. Oh, I'm trying to figure out why this went all explodey. User bin environment Python three, just for fun. So we're going to generate our random number. If it's not equal to two, we're going to increment the counter. If it is equal to two, we're not going to increment the counter. And what should happen, I think, right? So runner, I mean, obviously it didn't. So I need to figure out what happened. If runner, if killer is not equal to counter, killer, oh, equals one plus equals one. That should do it. Random not. Yeah, so we can take all this out. I think this will work. All right, see what happens here. There you go. Sweet. So now we can actually check. Yeah, and so you could set you could set counter. No, see, yeah. So you definitely want to have counter at least out here. You could have killer in here. But it feels like it should be an instance variable as well, because counter is. And that way you can let these two things do communication through it. The, so runner and checker communicate through counter. Okay, that's that's how we get our separation of concerns there. I like this. This is good. And it's also nice because it's really it's super clean. So it's only
this isn't giving a return value. It's only making adjustments, which I also like because there's like, I think you're supposed to, I, th I think a good design pattern is to either manipulate something or return. And so here we're just manipulating. We're not manipulating and then returning. Actually, we're going to manipulate two things probably here because we're going to do some JSON in here as well. Yeah, so the the only thing that the while loop do, and so you could actually even do. Well, yeah, so I like this for a counter if you're going up. Yeah, I really like this for a counter if you're going up. Um, because the other thing you could do, like you could do a similar thing here, where you could say you could have while, and you could have some instance variable as. Um, just set to true and then have your function or your method turn it off as it's check I'm trying to figure out if that would be a better thing to do but then but I still need to have this counter set So I, I would need to set the counter regardless. And then you would have to set the true. So I kind of, I, I think I kind of like this. All these things work, but it's super weird. Cause like, I'm thinking about like making a post about this and there's a little bit of like, Ooh, what if I'm not like, if there's a clearly right way and I'm doing it some other crazy way. And also the other thing is like, I don't want to put something out there that's not a good way to do stuff. Not only for, you know, I don't mind as much looking like I don't know what I'm doing, but like I wouldn't want other people to grab onto the stuff that I did that was not a good way to do things. Um, but I think, I mean, this works and I can't. Well, so I guess the other way you could do it is, so let's try another way. While loop. Example do buy. Yes, please. So user bin environment Python three class the runner def init self self. Should I run true def um, machine is going to do some stuff def while looper looper. So while self should I run? Oh, this is, yeah, this is actually pretty nice. Self machine. Run machine. Run machine. Self should I run equals false. If name equals main tr equals the runner, 
TR Reaper. Here. All right, let's get our random numbers in there. So random. Not helpful. Random. See, this doesn't have a counter associated with it. That's stop fast. That also stop fast. If it's not equal to two, run equals false. Oh, 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 oh. If it's equal to two, we want to kill it only if it's equal to two. There we go. Yeah, so how would you do a counter with that? While loop example three. Add bye. Self counter equals one. So if it equals to two, you want to eject. Otherwise, self-counter equals self-counter plus one. Count self-counter. See what this does. Oh, hit two right on the bat. It's weird that it got 10 twice. It also missed one. Oh, I guess you'd want to do this here. One, two, one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Six, one, nineteen. We didn't dupe up on ten. Okay, cool. So you gotta do, it's that two jumps there. And it's the... See, this is pretty slick if you don't need to No, 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 they're all they're, they all work. They all work. But like, I, I kind of like this one for the for the counter because you just you're you don't have to do two things. Here, you've got to make two assignments. Here, you're only making one, but you don't have a counter. So I, I think I like this. I like this. We're gonna go with this, and so that gives us the separation and concerns now that we can get to just test our... So we're gonna get the file and the URL name. So, and actually we're gonna do this by this counter. So let's change this test. We're gonna drop counter. So this is gonna fail. Wait, hang on, we're green, right? Right, let me hide this for a second. Actually, I'm just going to get rid of that because it's not in the mix. So we're green. Now we're going to go break because this ain't going to happen. But for that, we need to pass ones here for right now. So there's our test. Def init self. 
itself that counter equals one. Still passing. Self counter. We need to change the test to something other than one. There we go. Because we need to make sure that we can update it. G day counter equals three. Now it's going to break again. But if we change these to threes, we should be back in order. Good. Yeah, the other thing I like about this is testing everything teaches me how to test. Like, work, it's practice, right? Work on the stuff that you're not good at. See, I, I can. I still don't know where to put that stuff. Maybe like that. That's not awful. Okay, so now... So we're, we're getting our test. So we're getting... Sorry, we're getting our URL. So we're just updating our counter. And so now, okay, yeah, so now we need to check and see if... Ah, okay, 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 okay. Now we need to see if next exists. So I think we need to do two things at the same time. See if next exists and then get the URL. But we'll, we'll worry about that one step at a time. Test. Should I get next? True, true. Should I get next is true, right? Because we want to, I don't need to test this both ways. Or I want to test this both ways. Should I get next? And so really, really, yeah. That shouldn't be a method. It should be a variable, right? No attribute should I get next. Okay, so. True. Okay, tests are passing. So should I get next is true. So really what we need is set, should I get next? Well, hang on. Do this. See, I'm trying to figure out how to how to make sure I'm not jumping. Like, 
I can make a couple changes. That if I'm not careful, I'll set something as true and then not actually be setting it as true. Like if I hard coded as true, basically what would happen. Um, but what I can do, I'm trying to, and again, I'm just, this is me working on how to test. Because what I, this is what I want. So this is going to fail. Okay, so what I can do, because it doesn't, because you can assign this stuff from anywhere, is this. So that should pass. And then what I want to do is run this set. Should I get next? Again, I'm, uh, so I don't know if this is going to be the right way to do this, but we're going to doing this part will help me figure out where I need to do it. So set that. So we're passing. And so now I can grab this out. Still passing. Okay. Yeah, that's not a bad way to do that. So I'm trying to, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm overthinking it. Let me just keep going. Um, I don't have a design pattern for this yet. So yeah, it's actually what's neat is if I do this right, I'll come up with a design pattern for how to build an, this, uh, build a set of tests for the same type of thing. Um, Should I get next wants to go to true. So what I need to have is JSON. I need to have a sample JSON is what I need to have. Test data. So new directory, test data, JSON with next, but no previous. Search next, yes. Preve, no. Because there's there's four states of this. No next, no previous. Yes, next, no previous. No next, yes, previous. Yes, yes. It's a two bit thing. So we've got JSON. So with open test data, search that read. 
as JSON file. Latest JSON equals JSON load JSON file. All right, does this compile? Compiles. So again, I. Yeah, so like this kind of set up expected true. So now should I get next? So to do Test before first JSON is loaded. Okay, I'm not going to put that in yet. Uh, I'm going to put that in yet because I want the idea of the variable to be there. And then also, should I get next? Okay, so you wouldn't look you wouldn't look at latest JSON to start with. You just look at so you start the while loop with should I get next equals true. So that's gonna fire the first time. And then you run the thing which looks at self counter equals one. Yeah, okay, I think this is doing all right. Yeah, and I do like this a little bit better than the killer thing. Like I kind of I kind of like that killer in isolation, but now that I'm seeing it like this, I like this as as its own thing. So import JSON and then this is it's really just loading the same thing but that's okay we want to really identify it explicitly as JSON still passing right still passing also I really wish it would test everything there we go so this test is setting latest JSON So this is where we get into this. And what we want to do is set latest JSON to false. I mean set set should I get to false. We're going to loop through it. And then if we hit next, we're going to set it to true again. And we're going to set our counter.
Actually, hang on a second. So we're going to test that independently in a second. Uh oh. JSON data is not defined. How about latest JSON? Actually, so should I get next? We're going to not set the counter there. We may come back and set the counter there, but like we're not going to start with it there. Like I don't want to I don't want that hanging out in code. I'm just taking a break to see if I want this, if I really do want this latest JSON. But yeah, you do, because you need, I want it. Yeah, I, want, I definitely want that in instant variable because I need to be able to pass that around because this needs to look at it and something else needs to deal with it. Um, though, I mean, you could save. Yeah, somehow you, you've got to be able to pass it around. So it might as well be in memory. Um, so now what I want to do is test a false on that. And the trick with this is you can't call this function first, which is a little weird because it's like, so when I was first thinking about it, I was trying to think like, how do you deal with the first time through, but you really just deal with that in the while loop. You don't, you don't call, should I get next until you have, until you've already called a piece of JSON. So should I get next is false. Uh, so I don't need to load a JSON for this one. Um, Cause all it's, all I need to do is like not have that. Oh, actually this is going to break. Aha. Uh -huh. wait, wait, wait. So I think this is going to break. That's okay. latest JSON equals JSON load s that. So this should still pass. Expected, we want to be true. No, false, we want it to be false. So let's make sure that fails. Yep, let's make sure we're green again, cool. So, Actual should I get next and we're going to go to dev on this one because we need to change code. So that's not going to exist. Oh, I just realized I've got a small font going. I don't want to make a big font. Nineteen instead of twenty. Where did they make a compromise? Now you can see it, and it's giant. Uh, is it run off the screen? Yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to keep that skull back there a lot. Where do I sit? There? 
That's better. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna call this in dev. That's gonna fail. So we're gonna do this. Wait a second. Oh, 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 okay. Sh okay, yep. And that, so we've got that going. And now we're just going to do, we're just going to load it. And should I get next? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that needs to be this. Okay. I think we're okay. Should still fail, right? Wait. Load JSON. Crap, backing out, backing out, backing out, eject. Actual equal should I get next? But we need to we need to call another method, is what it is. That's gonna fail. Oh yeah, how do we do wait, hang on, how, how, how do we do this? One step at a time. So that should I get next? So this is still going to pass. No. Oh, because I'm calling it. Right? No. What's happening? Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's where it explodes. So we call this the dev. It's going to explode. Set, should I get next dev? Still explode. No, passed. Oh, yeah, because it's not doing anything. Okay. And now, kind of like doing this this way better. Now it's going to fail because true is an equal false, right? Okay. But here we can set this to false. And now it should pass. Okay. Here's where we can do our logic. Oh wait, you could already do the logic up here, but it's it's failing through it. So really what we should have done is copy this down. Now it's gonna fail because it's gonna blow up on that collection, no key error. So what we need to do here is if collection in what's it need to be in? Starts with an E. Enumerable. Enumerate. No, enumerable. Oops. Passed. Okay. Yeah, so we've got to check and see. So we're going to set it to false. And then we check and see if there's a collection in there. In the JSON. Because, like, it's possible that you wouldn't have it. Like, I'm, I'm just doing that. I guess you could sit there and say, like, it's probably going to have a full JSON in it or whatever. But, like, if collection doesn't exist, bail. Um, you could... You could probably make the assumption that it's always going to give you a valid JSON with collection in it if it if it always works. But this is this is just a, a kick out because we know that if it doesn't have that, it can't have the rest of this. So we just did that logic in dev. That does seem a little hot, doesn't it? Hang on, I'm going to break up back.
There we go. I realize I'm getting hot in the mic is basically what it is. I, I can't, I think it's just a touch of distortion coming in there, even though it's not peaking, but whatever. All right, so that's going to dev. And so now, All right, the steps for this are going to be See, it's still I still don't know the the which steps to do this in. Cuz if we do this, this is cool. So everything should still pass. But let me make sure everything passes. Yep. Okay, so all the tests pass. So that means this code is good because we're just hijacking this. So now if we do, oh, so here's what we can do. We can do old here. We can do this here, but then we've got to change this test too. And that's what always, it always feels like that's doing one too many things. Ooh, broke it. False, not equal to true. Okay, bail. So that's going to dev. If we point this one to dev, what happens? Is that where it failed? That's where it failed. That doesn't make any sense. Because we're kicking, oh, wait, wait, wait. Now it's gonna fail. Or now it's gonna fail here. Okay, so you gotta gotta hit return there. All right. Actually, so let's look at that error. Again, trying to stay one step away from green. False, not equal, true. Okay, not super helpful. passing everybody's passing okay so let's walk through this so this is the one that's having a problem when it hits this so it's already true then we set it to false if collection is in there I close it up that way. Oh, look at that. That's cute. So this is what fails. I don't see it hitting. Okay, there it is. So it's hitting both of those. If link. Oh, wait a minute, now there's only one here. What just happened? There's two a second ago. Am I hallucinating? Where there's two there a second ago, but that's this is what I thought might be happening. So I think that enumerates killing it.
pi loop n four w n words if n pi if n pi if n no loop pi if n enumerate yeah for item and enumerate pi if n dict Oh, it would be keys. Wait. And is intended way to test the existence of key and dict. I did it wrong. Because that's a that thing. If collection and so I just needed to do this. Sweet. Sweet. Okay, those are both pointed to dev. I wonder if a good way to do that is, since that's going to be the target, I wonder if a good way to do that is to call this old when you do it. And then when you make the new and then point, oh, that's probably a good way to do it. Start by renaming it to old. Run your tests to find the ones that fail, switch them to old. Make a new one that doesn't have the name old on it. Oh, because this point to dev still, right? There we go. They all run. Nope. Also pointed to dev. Yeah, because that way all your then you can just get then you can delete old. You can find the tests that are pointed to old and switch them to new one at a time and then back up or like comment it out, delete them, make sure it still works. And then once you've done that, clear it. I like that. Okay. Okay, so let's figure out where we are. So it's gonna start a while loop. The first thing that while loop is gonna do is look at sh should I get next? Get him. while should I get next false print getting self dot counter if name main uh what do we call it gj gj equals get jsons gj get them run it getting one
Oh, yeah, so we can delete this. You know what we should totally do? Is one, we're gonna run it. Everybody cool? Tests, everybody cool? Test before first JSON is loaded. We don't need to do that. Run. I saw something else we wanna get rid of, which is this. Tests are pretty clean. Just need curl commands, I think. Because all we're going to do here so should I get next equals true oh we really should do the full curl command as one as one pull. There's no need to do this and then reassemble it later. Yeah, <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, all right, I've only got a few minutes and then I gotta go do a thing. So I'm actually going to comment this out. And I'm going to comment this out. We're going to run our tests. Two tests, right. F tests. Curl command. So, yeah, should this go in an instant variable or should it come back? I guess it should come back. Oh, wait, wait, wait hang on. We need to. Hmm. No, we're going to leave that. Because well, and here's yeah. I guess really see. I guess really what we should do is test. Okay, no, we do want to get rid of this. We do want to get rid of this because what we're gonna do is get all the parts of the subcommand. But do we store that in an instant variable? I think we do, right? Def test make curl command. Or do you just call it And have it return the value, right? Because you don't need to put it. It's already got the one in there. Yeah, this is a get, not a set. Test get curl command. Okay, that makes sense. What doesn't make sense is why I keep doing that instead of this. Get curl command. List. Because we want is curl.
that. Well, I guess we could just do the same, all the same thing that they've been doing. Oops, that was weird. Jumped. Yeah, so we could actually use a set here, a setter, is really what we should do, right? But I'm not doing that right now. Because that I don't know if that's like Pythonic or whatever. Uh, first thing I need to do is figure out what value I'm trying to set. Counter, three. All right, I got to run, because uh, I only got a couple minutes before there is something on TV that I would like to watch, which is a game with the Alabama, University of Alabama playing Old Miss or Mississippi State? I can't remember. One of the Mississippis. Two of the Mississippis. Three Mississippis. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 -I -S -S -I um, yeah, so this is cool. So we'll, we'll set the counter. We'll do the expected. I'm going to leave this as a broken test. I may... Uh, I'll probably... I don't know if I'm going to finish this up. I may finish this up while the game's on. Um, but this is... I like this. <laughs> it's, it would have taken me not that long to run this test if I was just doing it banging through it really quickly but like or to to set this up because you know it's really not that much code ah <laughs> uh, it makes me laugh um but uh the the practice of the testing is something that i'm really really appreciating so i like it so anyways uh y'all have a good one we'll see you next time take it easy be kind be ca careful take care be safe watch out for the skulls See y'all. Bye-bye.